A uh, long, long time ago, well, four months ago, exactly, I uploaded a sub-three-minute review of a knife. I mean, if you can even really call it a review, it was only the third knife video I had made, and although it has performed well, I really didn't know what I was doing or what I wanted my videos to be. And I recently rewatched it, and we've come up on 500 subs, thank you so much. So I, I felt like the knife in question deserved more from me. I knew I could do so much better, and well, I guess all that brings us to this. The Protec Malibu. Again, one of the most overwhelmingly popular knives to hit the internet in recent memory. Sure, we've all seen the kind of hype certain knives and producers can create, but the level of full-blown website crashing excitement generated by this manual button lock flipper was something on an entirely different level from anything that had happened before. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was sitting at work in the earliest days of my quote-unquote serious knife collecting, casually playing some Blade HQ YouTube videos in the background when all of a sudden, after another ad for Raid Shadow Legends had ended, the ProTech Booth SHOT Show 2020 video came on. And if you remember seeing this video, you will know why this moment is etched into my memory. Because in that 7 minute and 22 second long video, the man himself, Dave Wattenberg, showed off not only the hand-ground, mirror-polished prototypes for the Malibu, but he also had a pair of Arcform Slimfoot Autos to show off. And I'm sure I'm not alone in this, but when I saw these two knives, the part of my brain that keeps my vital organs operating froze up for a second because I needed all of the computing power available to process what I had just seen. The questions began running through my brain at the speed of light. Are, are these real? Are they available now? Dave, when will they be available? H how much are they, Dave? Dave, hey Dave, will the final model look just like these prototypes? What's the blade steel? What kind of color options are there going to be? Dave, hey Dave. Well, after my panic attack had subsided, I took to Reddit. At the time, my entire knife world began and ended at Reddit. And once I got there, I was met with the realization that I was not the only one. Already the posts had started to pile up, asking questions, making wild guesses on the price points, people talking about how there are already a couple of retailers showing them this coming soon. All of this wild speculation and this explosion of community outcry went on for weeks and weeks, and the noise level grew more and more with each passing day. But outside of hearsay, no real news was coming out of Protec. The social media frenzy was met only with silence by Dave and the gang. Only a teaser post here or there on their Instagram feed, you know, a close-up of the pivot, but nothing else. But no release date, and still no official retail price. But then, it happened. Like a flash of lightning, it struck the big online retailers. But after the lightning, no thunder. No rolling, rumbling wave of sound followed. And if you were like me, you were none the wiser. How, how did I miss it? Well, upon finally seeing someone post on Reddit that they got one, I frantically opened more Chrome tabs than my computer could handle, scouring each and every retailer. Sold out, sold out, coming soon, sold out, sold the fuck out. Fuck. I was too late. How did I miss it? I went back to Reddit, posting comments on every quote-unquote check out my Malibu post. Where'd you get yours? Where can I find them? Are there any left? Then, minutes later, minutes, I might add, felt like an eternity of soul-crushing sadness and gut-wrenching agony, a response. EDC Specialties has a couple of blue warnings left. Who the fuck? Okay, quick, no time to waste. You can do this. Only two left. Add to cart. Okay, great. Thank God for Google Chrome Autofill. Payment info? Yes. Wait, fuck. What the fuck? Where's my wallet? Crap, it's in the car. Now, when I tell you, I sprinted out the door to my car. I mean, I full on, no shoes, sprinted out to my car. Thank God I was wearing clothes. I grabbed my wallet, emptied its contents onto the ground, grabbed a card, and... Three days later, this arrived in all of its beautiful blue glory. I had done it. I had done what only days prior felt like the impossible. The Protec Malibu, the fourth manual folding knife produced by what many, including me, consider to be the greatest automatic knife manufacturer around, this simple, elegant, EDC-oriented manual button lock flipper has become one of, if not the most lusted after knife on the market today, or off the market, I guess. And a year ago, as we've just discussed, it damn near broke me, just as I'm sure it damn near broke a lot of you as well. 
This American Made Flipper is available or will be available in two color options so far and with two blade options. The hard coat anodized scales can be had in this fun and bright shade of blue or in black. And the blade shapes available to date are this, the quote unquote Warncliffe, as well as the Reverse Tonto style blade. Personally, looks wise, I think the Reverse Tonto takes the cake, but beggars cannot be choosers. Hence why I have the warning and I love it. The aluminum scales come together to make this nice looking and heavily gemmed pseudo backspacer that covers the back 70% of the spine of the handle, giving off a false integral kind of vibe. And on the show side, you've just got the pivot screw, the screw for the blade stop, and that button. And that's it. Minimal hardware is kind of an understatement here. The button is recessed into the little milled area, so it nearly sits flush with the rest of the show side scale. And on the other side of the Malibu, we're met with what has to be my all-time favorite pocket clip, Protex magnificent deep carry pocket clip, held on by a pair of recessed and flush mounted screws. And it's stonewashed to match the hardware and the blade. A plus. And as far as hardware goes on this side, three body screws that hold everything together. All good stuff, an insanely clean design. We do have some slight chamfering along the bottom of the handles that help add a little bit of extra intrigue to an otherwise plain profile, while also aiding those ever so slightly milled out ergonomic swoops. Opening this piece up, we are met with that flat ground stone watch blade done up in CPM 20 CV. That's right, a Protec with something other than 154 CM. I know, please hold your applause for the end. They call this blade shape a Warncliffe, but we've got a pretty decent belly here, so if you want to get technical, not a true warning, but I definitely see why they called it what they called it. Definitely a Warncliffe style blade shape, no question there. Overall, the looks here are what they are. It's nothing mind-blowingly gorgeous, and it doesn't rewrite the rulebook on knife design, but it's very clean, very nice looking top to bottom. Nothing that will scare people away, but a knife made to look like a knife, work like a knife, and feel like a knife. So as far as I'm concerned, the looks get a pass. Now going back to that blade, as I mentioned, this is done in 20 CV, kind of the American take on M390, so great edge retention and solid rust resistance. The stone wash is done really well, and it has done an amazing job of hiding any kind of scratching or marring. From the factory, this piece was good and slicey, but I'm a freak and decided to reprofile that edge to 17 degrees, and now it's horrifyingly sharp. Oh, and it just melts everything. The blade stock is good and thick, and thanks to the blade shape, that thickness carries all the way out to the tip. Flat grind comes up about 50% of the way or so, but the blade isn't that tall, and I think I would like to see a hollow grind on the Malibu at some point. Either way, for most any EDC use case, this blade is 100% up for the job. No complaints as far as cutting performance goes. And as for the Ergos, well as simple and clean as this knife is, no jimping on the blade spine, no real usable finger choil, very slight ergonomic lines, it's really comfortable in the hand. The scalloped areas and that extra chamfering knocks down any potential hot spots, and the pocket clip absolutely disappears into the hand. There is kind of a slight natural grippiness that comes from Protex anodizing, which keeps you from slipping around, and the flipper tab comes down and acts like a little safety to keep your finger from slipping out onto the cutting edge. You can squeeze and slice for hours on end with this piece without the slightest bit of discomfort. Definitely some impressive ergos considering that outwardly it's mostly straight lines and smooth surfaces. And finally, why we're all here. Why this keeps selling out faster than they can be produced. The action. I have, and I have reviewed, the predecessor to the Malibu, the Ferrum Forge Drop Protec Mordax. And Protec took everything they've learned from that and their previous manual models and improved almost everything about the manual flipping action. There is a detent here, and it's incredible to me, but it feels snappier than a lot of frame locks I've handled. You really can't fail it unless you're going out of your way to fail it. That flipper tab shoots that blade out with some authority every time, and it locks open with a nice satisfying click from the button kicking back into the notch in the blade. And this is running on some buttery smooth bearing, so once you press that button, the blade, it, it just absolutely fucking drops. There's no question it's coming down every time. No issues, no questions asked. She's coming down. And thanks to the fact that this is a button lock, your fingers are nearly in the path of destruction when you go to close it. Which is good for me, a guy who never seems to have enough band-aids around. Overall, this is such a mind-blowingly excellent and endlessly addicting action, I had to stop carrying the Malibu around my fiancé and my family and my friends because I physically cannot stop myself from flipping it open and closed over and over and over and over. It's something special and it's an experience I have not yet been able to find anywhere else in my 
seemingly endless collecting. So at the end of the day, where does this long-winded and most likely unnecessary sequel leave us with the Protech Malibu? Well, it's been nearly a year since it was first announced, and still to this day, there's just as much noise in the community as there was back then. If you've got one, you want to show it off. And if you don't have one, you're most likely willing to sacrifice your eldest child for the chance at purchasing one. It's an excellent EDC folder and an incredible piece of American engineering, a showcase for how good American manufacturing still is and can slash will continue to be. It's a great slicer, looks nice for most any occasion, formal or casual, and it's under $200 retail. <sighs> Oh yeah, and it is probably one of the most satisfying fidgety actions in my collection to date. I've had this and I've loved this for nearly a year now, and I don't see that love dying off anytime soon. So keep that 175 in your slush fund, and keep your eyes peeled and your ears to the ground. We all know there are more coming. Just be sure you keep practicing those checkout skills for when the day finally arrives. So, until next time, thank you for watching. Bye bye now.